10 cool facts about Alaskan king crabs. Do you know how their life cycles work and how Russia introduced them to the Atlantic? They are now an invasive species. My name is Chris and you can learn all about animals with me on Animal Science TV. Fact 10. King crabs are not true crabs. King crabs belong to a super family called Lithodidae. They are actually quite different from true crabs. True crabs can walk sideways, they can survive on land, and they have quite a different anatomy. King crabs can only survive underwater, and they walk forward due to the different angle of their leg joints. Look at these images of king crabs versus true crabs. Can you see a difference in the number of legs? The king crab's back legs are hidden, and I'll explain why later. They appear to have two fewer legs than true crabs do. Interestingly, the king crab, along with all other crustaceans, literally has blue blood. King crabs transfer oxygen with a blue copper-based molecule called hemocyanin. They do this by using their five gills. Mammals, on the other hand, use a red iron-based molecule called hemoglobin um, with their lungs. Nine, all crabs are decapods. The word decapod combines the words deca which is Greek for 10, and arthropod. Arthropods have symmetrical legs, exoskeletons, and have further evolved into animals such as insects with six legs, arachnids with eight legs, and decapods with 10 legs. In the case of king crabs who have 10 legs, their front pair of legs have evolved into pincers. These front pincer legs are used for both offense and defense. Females have two pincers of about the same size, while the males have one asymmetrically large pincer, and they use it to wave at females. If he has a very large pincer and he's able to wave it quickly, it means he is a good, healthy, and attractive mate. The back pair of legs are so small that you can't see them, and they have evolved for sexual applications. The male will use his teeny rear legs to transfer sperm to the female, and the female will use her hidden rear legs to defend and care for the fertilized eggs um, that she carries in her underbelly pouch. Kind of like a kangaroo. We'll talk more about reproduction and the life cycle later on in this video. Eight, defensive aggregation pods. During non-breeding season, king crabs are solitary creatures. But during breeding season, they have been observed engaging in an incredible cooperative defensive strategy. It reminds me of the formation used by the Spartans in the movie 300. They stack up on top of each other with pincers facing in all directions. The males defend the females, sometimes in numbers of over 1,000 individuals, and they stack over 10 feet tall. This cooperative social defense makes them an overwhelming threat to most attacking predators. This behavior is called potting. But the king crab's main defense is its spiky hardened exoskeleton shell called a carapace. 7. Molting and Regeneration The king crab's carapace could be likened to the armor on a medieval knight. It can't expand at all, and this is a problem. The crab itself keeps growing while its armor does not. The crab needs to escape its armor, and to do this, the crab excretes an enzyme that loosens its connection to the armor, 
and cracks the underside of the carapace wide open. The crab is now able to escape from the armored carapace through this crack, and it is now very vulnerable. We call this process of shedding the hardened exoskeleton molting. After molting, the king crab is only wearing a flexible soft shell. It needs to hide and wait for about a week to grow a new, larger, armored shell. The king crab will then be safe until it outgrows its armor again. During a king crab's 20 to 30 year lifespan, it will molt this exoskeleton about 20 times. If a king crab loses a leg or a pincer from combat with another crab or from a predatory attack, it can gradually regenerate the limb with each molt. But limbs can only regenerate while the crab is in its flexible soft shell form. Six, a Russian invasion. Red king crabs are originally native to Japan, Eastern Russia, and Alaska. They are not an ecological problem in the Northern Pacific because they are preyed upon by the giant Pacific octopus in these waters. But in the 1960s, Russia intentionally introduced the red king crab to the Barents Sea. The Barents Sea is in the Arctic Ocean and it's between Russia's western shoreline and Norway. The plan was to introduce the king crab to the Arctic Ocean creating a crabbing industry to help the Russian economy. But this turned out to be an ill-advised move. The crabs quickly spread around, and by 1990, they invaded Norway's Atlantic waters. As you might have guessed, the Pacific giant octopus is not present in the Atlantic Ocean. So the red king crab is now an invasive species in Norway. Without this octopus present, the red king crab is now an apex predator in this part of the world. An apex predator is any animal that's at the very top of the food chain. Today, in Norway, the king crab is now destroying the native marine ecosystem. The king crab kills almost everything in its path, and there are also almost no predators to prey upon it. However, the king crab is not an invasive species in Alaska because the Pacific giant octopus is naturally controlling the crab population as part of a healthy local ecosystem. 5. The Life Cycle Breeding occurs in the warm waters of the intertidal zone during mostly the late spring. The intertidal zone is the area near the shore between low and high tide, um, where you would find tide pools. King crabs can only breed immediately after molting in their flexible soft shell form. This act takes more than a day. The male hangs on to the female, transferring sperm with his teeny rear legs, and the breeding pair is very vulnerable during this time. Once fertilized, the female carries an astounding 50,000 or more eggs in her abdominal pouch for over an entire year until they hatch into larvae. She uses her fifth set of hidden legs to clean and care for her future offspring during this year. Disturbing just one breeding pair could potentially reduce the population of red crabs by tens of thousands. For perspective, the estimated population of these crabs in just Alaska is only about 20 million. When the fertilized eggs eventually do hatch in the intertidal zone, larvae emerge as teeny shrimp-like creatures that can swim. Shrimp are also decapods. These teeny king crab larvae feed only on algae and plankton for about three months, and after five molt cycles, 
they transform into baby king crabs that sink to the seafloor. They are now about the size of a penny and hide in the nooks and crannies of the intertidal zone. When they grow large enough to defend themselves, they become carnivorous. Four, migration and diet. These teeny young crabs first migrate to reefs in shallow waters where they hide and attack other animals while they grow into large adults. On the reef, as they grow larger, they begin to eat sea urchins, mollusks, fish, worms, snails, sea stars, sand dollars, and barnacles. King crabs take about five years to reach sexual maturity. After the reef is picked clean, the crabs move down into the deep sea, eating whatever they can find along the way. They mostly collect falling detritus at this depth. Uh, detritus is animal waste falling from above or small pieces of fish that were killed by another predator from far above. While in the deep sea, the king crab is mostly a scavenging bottom feeder. It can easily kill other species of unfortunate bottom feeders if they happen to cross paths. If the king crabs are lucky, a dead whale will sink all the way to the bottom and they can feast on the carcass for weeks. Annually, the adults flee the intertidal zone because the surface freezes, so they migrate about 100 miles away into the deep sea to scavenge for more food. King crabs are too heavy to swim and they only walk at about 0.15 miles per hour. Red king crabs thrive at depths of 600 feet in near freezing 30 to 50 degree Fahrenheit salt water. Um, if you don't remember, fresh water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but salt water, it doesn't freeze until temperatures drop uh, well below 28 degrees. Three, conservation efforts and price. The red king crab is an important part of the ecosystem in Alaska, and it is an essential food source for the giant Pacific octopus. The king crab is threatened by overfishing and would probably be extinct today if not for uh, fishing regulations. King crabs are a popular food item because they are high in protein, low in fat, and have a high concentration of many essential vitamins. This crab is also considered a delicacy and a single crab sells for $100 to $300 based on its weight. The red king crab is one of the largest crabs in the world. It can grow up to 30 pounds with a six foot leg span. Sadly, some people enjoy eating exotic animals. Could you please explain to me why you think people like eating exotic animals in the comments below? This $100 plus price per animal combined with the relative ease of catching them makes them a prime target for fishermen. To catch king crabs, Crabbers push something called a pod off of the side of a boat. The pod is a metal cage loaded with bait, which is usually some type of a dead fish or chum. The pod quickly sinks to the seafloor and it's attached to a buoy by a rope that could be, I don't know, 650 feet long. The fishermen leave these traps in place for several days, hoping that the migrating crabs will crawl into them. During the short winter crabbing season, the crabs are no longer in the warm, shallow breeding grounds. The crabbing season in Alaska only lasts for about two to four weeks and only during the winter time. As we explained earlier, there are about 20 million king crabs off of the shore of Alaska, but we need to avoid fishing them during their spawning time when the females and young small crabs are vulnerable. 
This two to four week per year limited fishing season is essential to maintaining a healthy population. Even during the short fishing season, females and young crabs are required to be thrown back. Crabbers can easily tell males from females by the shape of the markings on their undersides. Thank you so much to my five Patreons. The Animal Science TV project is only made possible by the support of my Patreons who are helping me to grow this small channel into a long-term project. I just started doing this full-time and want to give special thanks to my new Patreon, Julie Acepilot, who has given me some awesome video suggestions. Julie's support helps motivate me and you can help me too if you want to by checking the description below. Back to cool fact number two, natural predators. The king crab is a semi-apex predator itself, but it is easy prey for the giant Pacific octopus. In the deep sea, other animals that might try to eat a king crab include sharks and some large deep sea fish. While in the reef and intertidal zones, sea otters and birds of prey may attack, but the king crab is nearly invulnerable with its spiked carapace and powerful pincers. Natural predators generally will only target small baby king crabs or even adults who have just molted and are in their flexible soft shell form. But the main threat to these amazing creatures, like almost all animals, are humans. And one, ocean acidification. Overfishing is a problem, but with strict regulations, we have been able to maintain the red king crab's population. The real future problem is ocean acidification. Climate change is likely to cause the extinction of most marine crabs within the next 100 to 200 years. Not only crabs, but all crustaceans and corals. The animals that rely on crustaceans as a food source will become threatened as well. Ocean acidification, uh, quickly explained, is caused by humans burning hydrocarbons like oil and coal. Um, the process of that reaction is heat being released, carbon dioxide and water vapor. And so what happens um, is a bunch of CO2 goes into the atmosphere, which is a greenhouse gas and a separate issue we'll, uh, I'll talk about later. But the CO2 in the atmosphere, it dissolves into the ocean and dissolves CO2 in water um, causes a compound called carbonic acid to form. And this makes the ocean more acidic. And this is a big problem for animals like crabs or corals or who know all sorts of different animals, everything within exoskeleton. The carbonic acid and the acidic ocean will dissolve the shells of things like crabs because um, they have an exoskeleton made of calcium carbonate. The ocean is getting more and more acidic every year, and this acidity will inevitably dissolve all calcium-based shells and exoskeletons. This ocean acidification is happening much faster than evolution can allow these animals to adapt to. This mass extinction event will go all the way up the food chain eventually affecting humans themselves. Losing the ocean as a viable food source will be a disaster. We need to act today to reduce carbon dioxide emissions, if not for ourselves during our own lifetimes, but for the future of all animals. Ocean acidification is likely to cause a global food shortage and the extinction of all king crabs. The next cool animals to be featured will be pigs, mantis shrimp, and the sloth. Please watch more cool animal fact videos 
in this playlist up here. I also do 101 science education videos. We do a live animal science news show where you can ask your questions and interact with us in the live chat. Thank you for watching Animal Science TV.